from Gareth Reese here in Hong Kong at the Cathay Pacific HSBC Sevens, joined by Zach Test, the former Eagle captain. And Zach, big for these players to round here at maybe the ninth place quarterfinal. But what a venue, what an opportunity. Absolutely. I mean, anytime you get to run onto this glorious stadium, it's a very special moment. And even though they're not where they want to be with Olympic qualification regulation on the table, every game matters. Well, we talked about the Spanish side. Very unlucky to lose to, lose to your Eagles in the first game on Friday night, but they did get that win over Japan. And how about Uruguay? Great scenes. Get onto social media. Check out some of the reactions of the Uruguayan team after that famous victory over GB right at the death last night. Yeah, they were brilliant against GB. They just scrapped and clawed and weighed their way to a, a victory, and it really came from their defense. They didn't give Great Britain an inch, and then when they got the ball in their hand, they were ruthless. Ben Breakspear will be in charge, monitoring that defense and everything that's going on out there. Two very skilled but very stubborn teams as well. Obviously, Uruguay have qualified as a core team on the HSBC World Series through their victory in the Challenger Series. And our crowd in Hong Kong, day three, there's a few blurry eyes around the place, but they're trying to get behind it here. Great kick from Uruguay and the light blue jerseys playing from right to left. Spain with early possession. Oh, Juan Martinez was brilliant. Three tries yesterday. If he gets any space here, Uruguay will be in trouble. Tiago Romero, also a powerful runner. It's a very organized Spanish side. And this man has been at this for some time, Popla. Just got the ankle grab from his opposite number, Vinals. Eight offside advantage. Advantage being played for the Spanish, but obviously in seven, very short advantage. advantage and it is indeed over. That one's thrown back wildly, and it's loose for a moment. Hacked ahead by Uruguay, who gets the second touch. It's a great one. It's just gone off the side of the boot of Bautista Basso and his football skills letting him down a bit there. Yeah, full display of the South American football skills. Really good from Spain, building the phases, moving their way all the way into Uruguay's half, but just a little too much offloads there, getting a little isolated. And now they've found themselves in their 22. That piece, bringing me down off through Moreno, and the towering presence in that lineup. There's a big tackle from Uruguay. We know they bring the physical presence to this, and that's what really got under the skin of Great Britain. Popla with a swerving run there. And Martinez shifts it wide. Options, Ceres. Defended, he's found some space. And will he find the try line? He's 22 meters to go. Josep Serres, first try for Spain here in Hong Kong. Yeah, Serres has been brilliant all weekend. When he gets that ball in hand, he's very evasive. But all came from Paul Paul on one side. As you can see, Serres there, just a little dummy, gets the Uruguayan spinning around, and then he's got a free run to the try zone. Great start for Spain. They've held on to possession. Built the, the phases, built the pressure, and then when you get a man like Sarah's with ball in hand, he knows how to wait his way to find five. Spain adds the extras. Well, it's early morning here on day three. Any of you have played in a club sevens tournament? It's not a whole bunch different, is it, Zach? That Sunday morning wake up. We saw the All, All Black Sevens having to play for the first time ever the opening match on day three, but it's all about the players getting mentally fit as well as physically ready. Yeah, it's tough on day three. Usually you're up for only two days, and that day three is the, is the recovery day, so it's, you got to get that mindset going. Well, something the teams will have to get used to. This ball's still in play. The second touch, just a little too much. Great battle down the sideline. And again, it was Basso with Paul Pla in defense. Basso, amazing footy Strong. skills there. Just hugging the touchline. Look at the ball. Could he just bounce out at any moment? 
Saw that there was no sweeper in the line. Just a couple of brilliant touches. Just a little too much on that last one goes dead. Well, that would have been try of the season if he had if it completed that. That was fantastic work. Busy weekend for Uruguayan rugby, of course. Their 15s team qualified for the 2023 Rugby World Cup. We'll be playing Georgia in Tbilisi. A, a daunting task. As spiritual as this home is of sevens rugby, Tbilisi is a very difficult place to go and win. But right now it's Spain in full flight through Eduardo Lopez, but he's brought down and Paul Plaza backing up. Great support from him. He's got the right arm free, but he doesn't offload. Just getting the ball away at the last second. Fighting for the corner. Manu Moreno. Great team drive for Spain. Yeah, Moreno there, the beneficiary. But it all came from Lopez and Paul Pla. Stretching that Uruguayan edge defense, slicing through. Paul Pla had a 3v1, decided not to give it. And Juan Martinez with a spin and pass. Beautiful work there from Juan Martinez and a big bend from Moreno. Dots down for Spain's second try. Moreno, just such a long rangey player. I'm trying to get any piece of him, but he's so rangy that he can just power his way out of tackles. Trying to work his way to see how close he can get it behind the sticks. Yeah, for Manu Moreno, the 24-year-old. That's his second try here in Hong Kong. Version slips by the near post. It's a heavy kick, but it's kept in. Brilliant athleticism from Moreno. Eventually knocked on by Spain. Moreno with the big paw, whacking it back in field. You, he was even in touch, but if you leave from in touch, going out of bounds, and you touch the ball, that's fair That's fair play. Just unfortunate little knock on there from Lopez. They had really held on to possession really well. We'll see what Stability. Uruguay wants to do here to finish Coach. off these last 60 seconds. Free kick to Uruguay at the scrum. A chance for them with a minute to play to get back into this match. They're down two scores. This is the ninth place quarterfinal. These teams are battling for valuable series points. Good strength from Aldao, the captain. He's kept it alive. But big pressure, line speed there. Oh, and a great over-the-top pass. It's opened it up for Uruguay. They're into space. And it is Basso again on that far sideline. Back inside. Interplay. Vinales is going to get the score. But the whole Uruguayan team contributed to a great try. Phenomenal team try by Uruguay. Just the response they wanted to bring after two Spanish tries. Just working side to side, just great awareness. Understanding the pressure that Spain is bringing on the interior defense and then just a simple pin and pass. Basso just stepping on the inside, committing two Spanish defenders. And then a cheeky little offload to the masked man, dotting down for Uruguay's first try. Basso has been awesome in this first half. Yeah, Basso just 21 years old. But he's a big unit, 1 meter 80 and 85 kgs. It's his first try on the series, Vinales. And that'll do it. At halftime here, it's 12 points to 7, Spain leading over Uruguay. So evenly matched. If you look at the stat line there, Uruguay yeah, won't be happy with those five missed tackles. But you can see both teams, once they get the ball in their hand, 
They've got a really good attacking philosophy, moving team side to side, committing two defenders, 2v1s. So the second half's all gonna be about possession, who can retain it and who can use it. Zach, just quickly, you saw so much emotion when they beat GB last night. How hard is that for a player to get back up to this morning game? Oh, it's incredibly difficult, but it's something you work on in training, right? You have those moments of true elation, and then you've got that second training, and it's on that coaching staff to get them back up. It's on those leaders, and that's what they're going to have to rely on here in the second half. Well, here we are, Cafe Pacific, HSBC, Hong Kong Sevens, plowing away into day three. That is the Blitzbach on the bikes, getting warmed up here, getting the bodies ready. They have that big match up against Fiji. The cup quarterfinals still to come here. Shows you how much goes into the performances we get to see on the park. Right now, it is the ninth place quarterfinal, and that is Spain in the red jerseys, leading by a try, kicking off to Uruguay. Vinales gathers the ball. He's got a try early in that first half. One for Uruguay. Well, very light. First touch for him. Up at Benz. Up to halfway, are you Uruguay? Vinales with that distinctive face mask. The Phantom, as Dallin Stanford likes to call him. Wide ball again, and not for the first time. Faso floating with the far sideline. He's just stayed in field. And what a tackle coming across. Just a knock on as he's gone It's been knocked it. on by Spain. Really Don't good commitment from the Spanish defense. Oh, so unlucky from Spain yeah, there. On. They had such a great cover defense. Great tackle, look textbook. Shoulder in right around the kneecaps, cinching those, those arms through. Great stuff, full commitment there. Faso does really well to stay in the touch. Okay, time on. That's Alejandro Laforja coming across. I think that's what I'll be coaching the under 12s at Castaway Wanderers next Sunday morning. That textbook tackle there. Bind! Stadium not quite full as it was last night. Spilled forward by Uruguay. Lots of pressure from the Spanish. You see they're pumped up. Phenomenal pressure from La Fraga there. Timed his his pressure around the scrum brilliantly causing the knock on. That's what they can do. They have this high pressure defense causing turnovers. And once they get the ball in their hand, they move it to Popla, Juan Martinez, who have magic underneath their hand. Just tell me when you complete. Oh. Well, fresh legs on the feed. Okay, Nacio Patiolo for Uruguay. Juan Ramos, the captain, is going to get us going. He loops around. A hint of an overlap. Goes to Pla in space. He shows kick, but he keeps it, and he's still going. So much deception from this man. Oh, great line speed midfield from Uruguay. But the skipper's just taking his chance. Says if you're gonna be up there, then you can't be here. Ball is out and stolen by Uruguay. Little disorganized for the moment. They just wanna reset both sides maybe. The ruck reset. Here we go, four and a half minutes to play. Uruguay down by a try. This is the ninth place quarterfinal, and the substitute has got three. That's Facciolo, he's looking for the corner. The big man striding. Ignacio Facciolo for Uruguay. Stir it up, my friend. You definitely did it right there. This man would not take no for an answer. One, two, three. Spanish defenders couldn't bring the big man down. And with that long stride, not a whole lot of people are catching him. Brilliant individual effort there by Ignacio. Yeah, one thing Spain want to do is get their shoulders on. They don't want to have those handsy tackles, especially against these big, powerful Uruguayans. 
points this guy, understanding how important that try is here in the second half for his, his nation. Well, we talked about these heady times for Uruguayan rugby. The 21-year-old had a big moment there, and he celebrated right to the end. And add the extras, that is the lead. The kick has gone over, so with three minutes 20, the ball is now in Spain's court. They need points. Time. Looking to see if there may be a substitute. Time back on. Time's back on. Lichtenstein's got a plan. My Spanish isn't quite good enough to pick it up. So Spain have the possession they need. Taco! Oh, sorry, step back. Good refereeing from Break Spirit, just letting the players sort it out. Again, when the moment is big, Martinez is a hint of a seatbelt tackle, but the referee's playing on. Tough for him to see it. So much ground for these referees to cover. Release. That one is a full penalty for Uruguay not releasing. Yeah, you've got to release the tackle player, show a window to the referee, then you can have the opportunity to steal the ball. Well, you kind of can't think that Martinez isn't going to create something. He always does it, and he's created a two-man overlap. They won't need him. Into space is Romero. Under the post, Tiago Romero for Spain. Beautiful display of hands there from Spain. Textbook there. Just a little pull-out look for your Gwains in the picture. Just pin and pass. Sucking in defenders. Tiago Romero dotting down to put his nation in front. Great work from Spain. They wanted to play up-tempo after the penalty, and then again, just a beautiful display of hands. Those are the simple things done well at the training park. That's those moments, especially in these big games, that you gotta have that skill under pressure. That's its first try here in Hong Kong. First try this season. What, we do need something to score the try, please. Both sides looking to use their bench. It's going to be a big factor here on day three. How deep is the bench? How versatile are they? A minute and a half for Uruguay to regain the lead in this great battle. It's been back and forth. Spain winning the kickoff. Now the Uruguayans perhaps a little guilty of falling off a couple of tackles here. The four of them look just pinning him in there. That's the defensive structure, and they've won the penalty. Hands beyond them on the ground. Oh, no, Spain. All you had to do is keep the ball for 60 seconds. Referee Breakspear said, when you go as the supporting player, you have to latch on to the ball carrier. You can't have your hands on the floor. Therefore, you are sealing off the contest. Well, this Uruguayan team been in recent action in Asuncion, Paraguay, as part of the South American games. They got a bronze there behind Chile and Argentina, but now they're on the big stage, the HSBC World Series, and they've got 40 seconds to conjure up a try. Off and running, quick tap. Through the middle. Still alive. Pastore goes down. Referee's gonna reverse it. Arriving players off their feet. Again, he'll discipline. But it's something the referees are very conscious of. We know in sevens that the breakdown is, is critical. You've got to get your body position right. Again, his hands just hit the floor before his going onto the ball carrier. That's sealing off the contest. That's a no-no. Well, fittingly here in Hong Kong, the gong sounds, and Spain steal this one. Hotly contested battle. There you can see the disappointment after the highs of last night. Los Terros from Uruguay got this one. 17 points to 14 to Spain. What a great contest between these two great 